to another edition of the Vinyl Fetish Club. Yet another delay. Uh, <laughs> we were supposed to be reviewing King Senia Day's Juju Music. And it turns out that album is gone from my collection. I have spent the week looking for it. Looking in record stores trying to find a replacement copy. I've got other King Senia Day albums. And have you ever found something missing from your collection? And then you become obsessed with replacing it? All that matters is that gap where that album was be filled. I think I lent it to somebody probably in college or along the way. I have the CD of it, but the vinyl I think is long gone. Whoever, if you're out there and I lent you my King Sunny A Day Juju music, please bring it back. Um, I'm going to order another copy and we'll definitely do a review because that album is one of the 100 albums that must be in your collection. That's what we're doing. We're counting 100 albums that matter that should be in your collection. So we're going to skip ahead. So this week, instead of King Sunny, we're going to talk about a really great record that's near and dear to my heart. Bad Brain's fourth album, Eye Against Eye, released in November of 1986, 35 years ago. Such an important record, such an important innovative sound that was happening in the 80s. Uh, the Bad Brain's named after a Ramon song on that album. Uh, were a DC hardcore band. Hardcore was kind of an attempt to reclaim punk rock away from the cliche people that wanted to, you know, put punk rock on a poster at Spencer's uh, and, and bring it back to the kids. Loud, fast rules, just really aggressive music. Those of us that around in the 80s spent a lot of time in the mosh pit just slamming our asses off to music by bands like the Bad Brains. In fact, saw them at the Metroplex uh, more than once. And, um, this uh, this album was the first album on SST Records, which was a big label in the punk rock world. It had Black Flag and Husker Du and a lot of uh, really important bands, Minutemen. And uh, the album before this album was re was produced by Rick Ocasek of The Cars, uh, but was still a pretty cool hardcore record. And then a couple years later, they came out with this record in 86 uh, that was produced by Ron St. Germain, who's all known mainly for working with Michael Jackson. Uh, and, and a little bit with U2 and Aretha Franklin and even engineered a Jimi Hendrix record. So you didn't really expect Ron Germain to be involved in a punk rock record. But this record really sort of changed things because it brought in other elements for the band. It brought in reggae, it brought in soul, it brought in some, some more complex uh, melodies. There was definitely some uh, heavy metal influences on this record. Their dreadlocks sort of grew longer on this album and um, was uh, a moment where the band all of a sudden started gaining a much larger audience. Now they had a pretty important label distributing them. The band is, uh, the band is really led by the, the Hudson Brothers, not the Hudson Brothers from the 70s, but Earl Hudson on drums and HR, which is stands for Human Rights, on vocals, uh, Dr. No on guitar, and um, really, really shredding intense, punk, metal, reggae, sort of infusing all this cool stuff together. Uh, and there is a, uh, there's a, a politicalness to it, but there's also kind of a personal nature to it. I mean, I think the, the best song on here is called Faithless Love, which HR recorded the vocals while in jail over the telephone uh, on a marijuana uh, trafficking charge. And it's coming from a jail cell, and so it's this really distant sound with this big, you know, kind of metal background. and. It's just a really powerful record. If you love those genres of punk, metal, and reggae, and you want them all on one record, this record is the one. Their follow-up record to this quickness became kind of an MTV hit, and they, you know, it started to go into the more the mainstream. But this record has had a huge impact. It's had a huge impact on, on people like in Living Color, Living Color, not in Living Color, the TV show, Living Color, that cite uh, this as a big influence on their black rock. Uh, had, it's been sampled uh, by people like Ice Cube, uh, Jeff Buckley covered Eye Against Eye. Eye Against Eye, like I and I, which is kind of a reggae notion of uh, uh, the way Rastafarians would say we, I and I, and saying, setting we. So this is kind of the tension there of Eye Against Eye. Uh, Jeff Buckley covered Eye Against Eye. Uh, Faceless Love, a brilliant cover of Faceless Love by Portland's own Storm Large on her most recent record. Um, not recorded from a jail cell, as far as I know. And so this record has lasting impacts about the role of, of African Americans in the hardcore heavy metal punk rock scene. 
just really, really a vital uh, record to have in your collection. And it is one of those albums that is just 35 years later, it still explodes off the turntable. And one of the things that uh, the Bad Brains bring out is this notion about cultural appropriation. There are a lot of people that were confused, you know, we're a bunch of black guys for black guys. And that lineup has changed over the years, but you know, HR always comes back in. Um, what are a bunch of black guys doing playing punk rock? I thought that was white people music. And it brings out the issue about what what is culture? What is cultural appropriation? Where does culture come from? Uh, one of the things that people like the B Bad Brains would point out is that uh, rock and roll starts with Chuck Berry, starts with the Delta Blues, starts with black music, and it's been appropriated by white people from Elvis Presley and the Beatles on down, including, you know, the, Rome, or the Ramones and all the white um, fathers and mothers of punk rock, that there is a black root to this music. So it shouldn't be weird when we see African American bodies playing this intense hardcore music. Uh, but also is the issue about what do we mean when we say cultural appropriation? This is a term that's around a lot. We're culturally appropriating, stealing from cultures. You see a white guy with dreadlocks, cultural appropriation. And one of the things that sociologists and anthropologists would talk about is that all culture is a form of cultural appropriation. All culture comes from other cultures. We call it cultural diffusion. It diffuses from a small culture to a large culture. The large culture discovers it, sort of like Columbus discovered America. You know, the people that were already uh, there, the indigenous people, didn't need to be discovered. It was their diffusion, including corn and tobacco being spread out to the world. And so all culture is a form of cultural appropriation. And when we get into the racial element of co cultural appropriation, the question is, do we give credit to where it came from? Do rock and rollers, even country music has its roots in the Delta Blues, do they give credit to the original creators of this, or are they just ripping it off and claiming it as their own? So when you see a black band rocking out like the Bad Brains or Living Color or Death, a metal band from Detroit that predates all these cats, it's a reminder that this music has a cultural source. White people have been pretty good at culturally appropriating, culturally discovering other forms of culture and claiming it as their own. If you're a Gentile and eating a bagel, you're culturally appropriating. And if you're a white person listening to punk rock, you're also cultural appropriating because this root, root, rooted music uh, comes from African-American culture at the very beginning. So the Bad Brains help us to think about the tra trajectory of culture. All right, that's just a little bit about Bad Brains. You you want this record in your collection. It's so rock and roll. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about a David Bowie album that's in my collection. I see it over there in the B section, Station to Station. We'll be talking about that album next week. But this album, God, this music is so important. It matters. The Bad Brains matter. This album, Eye Against Eye, matters. You matter. So let's talk about it.